Now, we want to look at Lewis dot structures on the Lewis acids. Now, there are some things you have to know in chemistry, which is just how to draw a structure for simple atoms, just atoms and the uh, simple molecules. Now, look at something. Let's say we are having, remember in the periodic table, the first element there is the hydrogen, which is H, that is symbol. Then we have, also we have um, helium, lithium, beryllium, and so on. Then we have carbon, we just take the popular ones. Then we have nitrogen, we have oxygen, we have fluorine, and so on. Okay, let's work with this uh, five. Now, if there, if and I ask you, draw the Lewis dot structure of these uh, atoms. The first thing you are going to do is just for you to know their valence electron or the electron in their atom of share. If you draw their share configuration, the, le the electron will be that will be at the atom of share or the group in which they are presenting. If you know their group, you can also get it from there. For example, now hydrogen is a group one, so it's going to have one valence electron. Carbon is a group four, it's going to have four valence electrons. Nitrogen is a group five, it's going to have five valence electrons. Oxygen is a group six, it's going to have six valence electrons. Then uh, fluorine is a group seven, it's going to have seven valence electrons, and so on. So if I just ask you now, what is the dust structure of this hydrogen? Since it has just one electron in group one, you just put one dot there. Just put one dot that is the dot structure of hydrogen. So, say what is the dot structure of carbon? Since carbon is in group uh, four, has four valence electrons, so I'm going to have four dots. So, you're not going to do it like this one, two, three, four. No, it's not like that. Look at how you do it. Firstly, you have to share it around the four period. You have one, two, three, four. So, that's how to do it. So this will be the dust structure of what? Of carbon atom. Then what about for nitrogen? Green group 5. It has 5 valence electrons. So the dust structure will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5. That will be the dust structure of nitrogen. Then what about for oxygen? Oxygen is a group 6. It has 6 valence electrons. Or it has 6 electrons in the atom of shear. So we're going to have 1, Two, three, four, five, six. That will be the dot structure for oxygen. What about for fluorine? Fluorine has seven valence electrons in group seven. So you have one. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. So this is the dust structure for fluorine and so on. So what you have to know just to know their valence electron or the group in which they are present, that would be their uh, valence uh, dust structure. Just draw it out. So now uh, let's apply this dust structure now to check maybe the structure of some uh, simple molecules. Now let's start with oxygen gas, which is O2. Now let's look at the molecule of oxygen gas. The structure we're gonna have we have O2. That's the oxygen gas. And uh, if you want to draw the structure, the Lewis dot structures for this, look at what you're gonna do. First thing, we have two oxygen there. First, remember oxygen has six electrons in the dot structure. So we have one, two, three, four. Five, six. Then this one also one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's what I'm going to have. So what will now happen is, uh, since any electron that is two is okay, 
If it's a pair, if it's pair, it's okay. There's no problem with that. Yeah, all those ones that are single now, look at what is going to happen. This single in this place will join with this single in the other side. It will form a single bond. This single in this other side will join with this one. They will form another single bond. So therefore, we will have something like this. We we'll have all. One bond for this first one. Another bond for the second one. I wonder who here. They will have one, two, three, four, which is this and this. Then for this other side, we have one, two, we have one, two, or this and this. So this will be the structure of O2. So you can see it. Uh, we have this uh, lone pair of electrons. We have two here. We also have a uh, two in this other side so this is the structure of oxygen now let's look at uh, the structure of hydrogen gas let's see the structure of hydrogen gas now for the structure of hydrogen gas remember hydrogen is just h the hydrogen gas is h2 that is hydrogen gas so we have two h there so we have one I want that one two. So remember, I already has one dot, one dot. There's no other dot again. So you already need to acquire the duplest duplet state to be happy. So you're, gonna, you're supposed to have two dots of this nature to as, obtain the structure of uh, helium. So what is going to happen is this one in this other side will share with this one so that both of them looks like something like this one two something like this now that we can see both of them are having two both of them will not be happy so these two dot now will form a single bond then we'll have something like this h single bond h so this will be the structure this is the structure of hydrogen gas which is H2 then let's look at the structure of water now for water we have H2O that's what we have so uh, the structure is going to be O it has more electric capacity be the central atom then how many electrons does this guy has in the atom which here remember six one two three four five six six you can say six so what's going to happen would be we have h2 h2 hydrogen remember one h will be here with one dot and that h will come with one dot so since this and this are already paired there's no problem with that again so these two here now we combine together to be paired this one combine together to become paired so we we'll have one bond here one bond here so we we'll have something like this this paired and that paired then one bond we have one bond to h and that bond we have another bond this issue so this will be the structure of h2o which is water it has two something like i see two no pair so a pair of electrons just two electrons that will two means pair take note of that now let's look at you can see this one can donate a pair of electron now so this one can add now let's look at for lewis base now remember lewis base Lewis base, we have Lewis acid. Now, Lewis base can donate a pair of electron. A Lewis base can donate a pair of electron. It's a species that can donate a pair of electron. While Lewis acid are species that accept pairs of electrons. Now, Lewis base are known as nucleophiles because they are electron rich they can donate electrons 
why Lewis acid are known as electrophiles because they are electron poor. They can accept electron pairs. Now, example of this can be, let's look at it. Example can be, example of a Lewis base. Remember, Lewis base can donate pair of electrons. That means it has electron pair. Example can be this NH3. We have so many of them. Any, if something can donate a pair of electrons, it's a Lewis base. NH3. So, if I ask you now, what is it? Let's check if this guy actually has electron pair. So, are you going to draw it now? Remember, for we have three hydrogen here, one hydrogen. Remember, for nitrogen, we have uh, uh, five valence electrons. So, that's one, two, three, four, five. You can see it. Then we have three hydrogen here. So, one hydrogen will come here. Another hydrogen will come here. Then another one will come to this place. So, these two here will combine to form a pair. These two combine to form a pair. These two combine to form a pair. So, two bond will form a sing two dots will form a single bond. Two dots will form a single bond again. Two dots will form another single bond. Then we have something like this. N. Then we have H. We have H. We have H. Then we will now have one loop pair of electron left, which is this. So, since this ammonia has this lone pair of electron to donate out, to something in Lewis acid. So ammonia is now in Lewis base since it has can donate out lone pair of electron or a pair of electron. So ammonia can donate a pair of electron. So this is why it is a Lewis uh, base. Now let's look at H plus. Let's look at H plus. Now remember H, just ordinary H has one dot. If we, if we now have H plus, remember H is supposed to need two dots to be happy. We have two dots, we just be happy. So, if we now have H plus, H plus means H have lost one electron. Remember it was only having only one before. So, if it's not H plus, that means there is no electron again. That is the meaning. That is the meaning. Look at it. This is how hydrogen looks like the dot structure so if he loses this electron so he loses that electron then it will not take the shape no dot again then you will not put plus that means you have donated one electron out so it will not become a cation or a possibly charged ion so in most cases all positively most possibly uh, 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 charged ions are Lewis acid because they can accept electron pairs like ion two ion and so on k plus even c a two plus and so on so all those positively charged ions can act as a lewis acid why negatively charged ions like cl minus pro minus pro minus and so on can act as a lewis base nh3 NH3 also has a pair of electrons to donate. This one has pair of anything that have pair of electron any to have pair of electrons to donate out is acting as a Lewis base. So now let's look at why this H plus can accept. So remember if it is plus, there's no electron again. And what does it need to be happy? Yeah, it needs just a pair of electron to be happy. So it can accept a pair of electron. This H plus can accept electron pair. So this can accept electron pair, you can call it an acid. So let's look at the reaction. Remember, we have NH3 and it has two lone pair. Then if we now add it to this H plus, which is looking for these two to be happy. So what will happen is that this guy will fuse itself here. Then we'll have something like this. Or something like this N H4 plus which is ammonium ammonium ion. This guy, this one is ammonia, but this one is ammonium ion. So that's what is going to happen. So let's look at another one. Let's look at another one. Now let's look at this AL. 
cl3 so like aluminium trachloride so remember aluminium is a group 3 that is if you have three uh dots yeah yeah she had three dots you know she take the shape one two three not like this she take the shape and chlorine has seven dots i don't know if you can remember it one two three four five six seven although remember if you want to do it for do it this way so for share one two three four five six seven so what is going to happen is that look how it's going to happen now this guy will pair with this we have three of chlorine so three of this chlorine now will just pair and that chlorine will pair with this one and that chlorine will just pair with this and that chlorine will pair with this cl one two three four five six so if you check now for this aluminum to be happy you need a pair of electron to form the optet group so that the optet group will be a T because look at it a one just one bond is two electrons so it's two four six then you just need these two now to be happy so that means this aluminium trichloride or alca3 can accept a pair of electrons so since it can accept a pair of electrons it can be called a lewis acid so this alca3 is a lewis acid so that's how we know Lewis acid and Lewis B. Something that can accept a pair of electron is a Lewis acid. Something that can donate a pair of electron is a Lewis base. So please take care of that. It's very, very important. Thank you. If you have any question, you can share in our comment section. Then you subscribe, share to others. And know that we also have amphoteric uh, substances which are substances that can act as an acid and a base example of such a, a substance is water water can act as an acid and a base and uh, others so anything that can act as an acid can also act as a base it's called a photetic uh, substance or species then uh, anything that can something like uh, any oxide that can act as like acidic oxide and the basic other side at the same time it's called an amphoteric oxide then when something that can accept and donate a proton is some free proteins also know those things thank you all right thank you don't uh, forget to share god bless you all share to others and like this video subscribe and thank you very much thank for always uh, reaching out to our channel to uh, study god will give you the understanding thank you very much try and share god bless you